Tussauds studio in Paris during the French Revolution. Now, uh, here's the famous Sleeping Beauty, modeled by Madame Tussaud in 1793. Good morning, George. Morning, sir. Now, over here, we have a very interesting tableau. Now, this one shows the execution of Mary, Queen of Scots at Fotheringay in 1587. Will you come this way? I beg your pardon. Would you tell me where I could find Edward Simpson? Edward Simpson? Oh, yes, the Brighton murderer. You'll find him at the end of this hour. See, that's rather odd. Asking for that figure by name, as if he knew him personally. What? You can't do that! Identification, sir. Thank you. Mr. Alan Roberts, Bank of England. I hope you realize, Mr. Roberts, that your refusal to explain this extraordinary action could prove rather embarrassing. I've already told you it was merely an angry impulse. If you have any intention of detaining me, I should like to call my solicitor. Do you wish to press charges? No. But if Mr. Roberts is willing to pay for the damages, I imagine they'd be in the region of about 10 pounds. I'll send you a check. Angry impulse. I could have got more information out of this dummy. Edward Simpson, the Brighton murderer, hanged for the murder of his wife 30 years ago on the evidence of a pair of broken spectacles. Well, Mr. Simpson is certainly not unique. Oh, on the contrary, quite distinctive. Neck broken twice in 30 years, once by rope, now by a walking stick. Yes, I'm afraid the old boy's been having rather a bad time of it lately. Had his glasses broken last week by accident, and now this. Evidently, lightning strikes twice with Mr. Simpson. Placard says broken glasses sent him to the gallows. Yes, as a matter of fact, I'm having the original prescription refilled. Wherever possible, we try to dress them in their own clothing and personal effects. Uh, of course, the murder weapon's a duplicate, the original ones in Scotland Yard. That face certainly looks familiar. It should. He is perfect double for Mr. Roberts. Inspector might be very interesting to try and discover what made young man attack White's figure. Yes? That was quite a sentimental visit you paid to your father this morning. Remarkable resemblance, isn't it, Mr. Roberts? Who are you? Come, come, Mr. Roberts. I prefer to keep my head on my shoulders. What do you want? Shall we say a thousand pounds? Your position at the bank is worth much more. Oh, this is blackmail. Go to Hyde Park in one hour's time. Drop it behind the first bush inside the Marble Arch entrance. And keep moving. Oh, oh wait! Dawson, please get me a thousand pounds in small bills for my personal account. Mr. Kingsley's been trying to reach you. I told him. What kept you on that confounded phone? I wanted to talk to you about it. Uh, Alan, what's the matter? 
Aren't you well? No, I... I suppose I do feel a bit out of sorts. As a matter of fact, I'd thought of taking the rest of the day off. Of course. We'll talk about it first thing in the morning. Thank you, Miss Dawson. Records of the Simpson case, eh? Well, Roberts may look like Simpson. I hope the resemblance stops there. Brutal murder. Find anything? Yes. The Simpsons had a ten-month-old child. Hmm. The boy was placed in the Henderson Orphanage. That would make him now about 30 years of age. Could be, Roberts. I suppose you won't sleep till you know. Knowledge, Inspector is the only medicine to cure itch of curiosity. Tom, call the Henderson Orphanage and see what you can find out about a baby named Simpson. Father Edward Simpson, the Brighton murderer. About 30 years ago. Right. Very strange there were no fingerprints on this. Simpson might have worn gloves. Would indicate premeditation. No man would use this type of weapon in planned murder. Planned or otherwise. These frames. And this lens were enough to hang him. Simpson admitted they were his. But denied murder. He claimed he arrived home, found house dark, heard scream, hurried inside. Was attacked by unknown assailant. Then, when he regained consciousness, he found wife dead. Couldn't have happened that way. Please explain. The frame of Simpson's glasses was found in his wife's hand. Pieces of shattered lens all over the place. But one lens, unbroken beneath her body. It's obvious what happened. What did happen? She must have put up a struggle. She grabbed his glasses, one lens was knocked out in the fight, and she fell on top of it. The implication seems clear. According to this record, this lens was examined only last week by an optometrist, a Dr. Antrim. Mr. Wallace at Wax Museum said he was having Simpson's prescription refilled, remember? Mm. According to the orphanage records, a baby named Alan Simpson was adopted by Joseph and Elaine Roberts. So, Alan Roberts is really Alan Simpson, Edward Simpson's son. Evidently, young Roberts only recently learned of relationship with Simpson. The orphanage told me Roberts checked with them this morning. But that was the second inquiry they had today. The first was made by Dr. Antrim. That's the optometrist to examine the lens. Dr. Antrim. I assure you, Mr. Chen, there must be some mistake. I didn't know Edward Simpson had a son. When did you say this inquiry was made? About 10 o'clock this morning, Dr. Antrim. Oh, that's easy to disprove. Today is my day at the clinic. I was there from 8 to 12. Some 30 patients can testify to that. But according to record, it was you who checked this lens at Scotland Yard. Yes. As you can see, this lens is completely shattered. Mr. Wallace from the Wax Museum insisted that I use Edward Simpson's original prescription. I suppose it must seem strange making glasses for a man who's been dead for 30 years. Also very strange that certain person used your name to check dead man's son's background at Henderson Orphanage. Yes. By the way, where is the son, Mr. Chap? I'm informed he is employed at Bank of England. Bank of England? That proves I made no inquiries at the orphanage. There was no need would appreciate explanation of that statement. If I had known Edward Simpson had a son working at the bank, I could have asked one of my patients, John Kingsley, an important man there. He was Simpson's friend, an executor of his estate. He could have told me anything I wanted to know. Most grateful for information, Dr. Antrim. I shall now visit Bank of England. Good day.
But, Mr. Kingsley, why did you not tell Roberts that he was Simpson's son? I never told anyone. I didn't want to hurt him. Roberts and I have been very close to each other. Almost father and son. So Alan Roberts was unaware you were father's friend, also executor of a state, hmm? Yes. I suppose I ought to have told him. Is he in trouble? Facts indicate possibility. A certain person used Dr. Antrim's name to investigate background of Roberts. Very possible same person would inform young Roberts of his true identity, also threatened to expose same. Blackmail? Very reasonable conclusion. Do you know of any large withdrawals of money made recently by young Roberts? No, but I can soon find out. Send Miss Dawson in, please. I can't understand how anyone could know about Roberts. Perhaps person who knew father observed resemblance. Roberts was with me when I ran into George Winslow some weeks ago. George Winslow, very unfamiliar name. Who is he, please? He... Miss Dawson, has Mr. Roberts made any large withdrawals lately? You may speak freely. This morning I cashed his personal voucher for a thousand pounds. Thank you. Seems you were right, Mr. Chan. But you have not yet told me who is George Winslow. Winslow? He was Simpson's solicitor. But, oh, it's absurd to think of blackmail in connection with George Winslow. Yes? Mr. Chan to see you, sir. Oh, show him in. Good afternoon, Mr. Chen. What can I do for you? It is said one hour's conversation with superior person is better than many years' study, but request only a few minutes of your time to discuss mutual friend. What friend? Alan Roberts. I hardly know him. What about him? I'm informed he is son of old client of yours, Edward Simpson. Simpson the Brighton murderer? You mean Roberts is his son? And now victim of blackmailer. How can I help, Mr. Chang? Blackmail's a matter for the police, you know. Like many victims who cannot afford to have secret revealed, Roberts did not consult police. Have reached conclusion that blackmailer must be person who knew the father. Plenty of people knew Simpson. He was well known before he was, before his death, and uh, notorious after it. But person also knew him well enough to know that child had been placed in Henderson orphanage. That was a matter of court record. Anyone could dig that up. So I'm afraid I can't help you. I'm most grateful for your valuable time. Sorry, I can't do more, Mr. Chen. <coughs> One more question, please. Is name on card familiar to you? No. Again, my deep thanks for your help. Small, but high-storied buildings rise from gradual accumulation of small bricks. Good day. Goodbye. Still looking at Simpson's records? What do you expect to find? That Dr. Antrim did not go to the Hennison orphanage. He didn't. We checked. It certainly looks like blackmail. But there's nothing we can do. Till Roberts asks for help. Duff? Stay right where you are. came to pick up the glasses for Simpson's effigy. Did he touch anything? Well, of course not. After all, I've been round murderers now for so many years. You might say it's second nature with me. May I ask, how did you call Inspector Duff? Well, I just picked up the... Uh, telephone. In that case, if there were no fingerprints before, we now have some. Have you checked everything for prints? Yes, sir. Charlie. 
They are. Alan Roberts. Have you finished counting the money? Yes, sir. I make it to be 1,000 pounds. Exact amount young Roberts withdrew from bank. All right. Bring Roberts in for questioning. Father and son. What a splendid tableau. How did you know Simpson was Robert's father? Oh, well, uh, uh, Dr. Antrim told me when I spoke to him earlier on the telephone. Why, Antrim never even started those glasses. These glasses were supposed to be finished this morning or today? Well, yes, he told me he'd have them ready earlier this afternoon. Oh, well, I'll just have to take them to another optometrist. Um, may I borrow the prescription that Dr. Antrim used for Simpson's glasses? There is no prescription. Oh, yes, there is. I used to see Dr. Antrim compare those glasses with it. He, he got it from that filing cabinet. P, Q, R, S, Sawbridge, Sedgwick, Simpson. That's it. All he had to do was to look at his own file. But why did he have to check the lens at Scotland Yard? Have any trouble? No, Sam. He surrendered this without a word. Hmm. Fully loaded, not fired recently, if at all. It's never been fired. We'll let ballistics prove that. Have them check it against the bullet from Antrim's body. Sit down, please. You recognize this? Yes, it's mine, but, but where did you get it? In Dr. Antrim's office. I don't know any Dr. Antrim, and I've never been in his office. Mr. Roberts, we know you are a victim of blackmailer. Someone who knew you were son of Mr. Simpson. Uh, Where were you told to bring money? Hyde Park. I dropped it behind a bush at the Marble Arch entrance. And if it was found in this Dr. Antrim's office, then he must have been the man who was blackmailing me. You should have asked the police for help. The lens and glasses are the same as taken from Simpson's wax figure? Exactly the same correction. I don't understand it. Antrim had the prescription for the glasses. Why did he have to check it with us at Scotland Yard? But, sir, these glasses weren't made from Simpson's prescription. This is a prescription for a slight case of astigmatism. The person who wore those glasses and that lens had severe myopia. Is there anything else, gentlemen? No, thank you. Clouds are now clearing, Inspector. Glad you think so. Glasses used on Simpson's wax figure were copied from original at Scotland Yard. Dr. Antrim observed difference between these and prescription of late Brighton murderer. He checked the observation by inspecting lens in Scotland Yard. Then he knew. But these glasses did not belong to Simpson. And since lens was found beneath wife's body, Simpson was telling truth. That wife was dead when he found her. But why did he admit at the trial that they were his? Since frames were his, he did not question Lenz. And Simpson's figure has been wearing the murderer's glasses for 30 years. Real murderer probably substituted a pair of own glasses to avoid suspicion if comparison were made with Lenz. However, he did not allow for a million to one chance that glasses would be taken to only man who could prove they were not Simpsons, Dr. Antrim. But why was Antrim killed? If murderer was patient of Antrim's? Could have been a very valuable bit of knowledge. Evidently, Antrim's price was too high. Well, here is our receipt. Simpson's clothing and personal effects were purchased from a, a John Kingsley. Including glasses? Uh, yes, yes, they're listed. May we borrow this? Well, of course. Well, all he needs now are his glasses, and he'll be back in business. But you will not, Mr. Wallace. That is, not with Mr. Simpson, because he is innocent. Yes. This receipt bears my signature. But I had no idea that Simpson's clothing and personal effects were to be sold to the waxworks. Why, I would never have permitted it. Mr. Kingsley, among those personal effects was a pair of glasses. Do you remember them? Of course I do. I ordered them from Dr. Anthrum for Mr. Simpson after his arrest. And you sold those glasses after Simpson's execution? Yes, with his other belongings. I was his executor. Actually, there was no need for one. 
his estate had vanished some time before. Was uh, Simpson aware of his financial condition? Apparently not. He was planning a venture with me which required an extensive investment. He even arranged for Winslow to meet us with his account books uh, for the purpose of liquidating his holdings. And when did you learn that Simpson would not be able to meet his financial commitments? After Simpson's death, Winslow handed his books over to me. Simpson couldn't have invested in a penny newspaper. And then the meeting that had been arranged between uh, Winslow and Simpson never took place. No, it did not. I arrived at Simpson's house, found him in a state of shock, kneeling over his wife's body. And when did Winslow arrive? He didn't get there at all. He was involved in an automobile accident two streets from Simpson's home and was taken to the hospital. Why have Simpson's glasses suddenly become so important? Because they are not Simpsons. I'm afraid I, I don't understand. If they aren't Simpsons, to whom do they belong? To the man who murdered Simpson's wife. But that's ridiculous. They must be Simpson's glasses. They match the lens that was found beneath his wife's body. Why, if it hadn't been for that lens, I could have got him off scot-free. But then, in your opinion, he was guilty. My dear Mr. Duff, my opinion didn't matter. Simpson was convicted by a jury. But he was not only my client, he was an intimate friend, and I did my best to defend him. But the evidence was overwhelming. That evidence, Mr. Winslow, helped to incriminate an innocent man. The lens found beneath Mrs. Simpson's body was not Mr. Simpson's. That's incredible. Simpson admitted it was his. He thought it was his because the frame was his. Simpson did not know his wife's murderer also wore glasses. Gentlemen, what has all this to do with Dr. Antrim's death? Dr. Antrim is the only person who knew identity of Mrs. Simpson's murderer. Same murderer also tried to blackmail young Roberts. And the man who killed Mrs. Simpson also killed Dr. Antrim. What do you expect to get from the records of an automobile accident that happened 30 years ago is beyond me. Let's concentrate on Kingsley. If anyone had a motive, it was John Kingsley. He killed Mrs. Simpson to incriminate her husband in order to avoid a prosecution for embezzlement. Then he killed Antrim in order to avoid being blackmailed when Antrim learned he was the murderer. The motive is correct, name of murderer incorrect. All right, Mr. Chan, suppose you tell me who it is. A certain person who tried to deceive humble colleague, but failed. Hmm? Curious duck will now put foot on unsuspecting worm. Come. Well, this is a novelty. The first time we've ever been able to put a real murderer in the place of a wrongfully convicted man. Thank you. You gentlemen certainly deserve a lot of credit. No, oh, Mr. Chan deserves the credit. The murderer gave himself away at an interview, and Mr. Chan spotted it. By the way, where is Charlie? He's supposed to be here oh, by now. Oh, here he is. Humble apologies for delay. Mr. Wallace? Key to gallows. Thank you, Mr. Chan. This will complete his wardrobe. The vital evidence. Obtained by investigating automobile accident. Records prove that Winslow was driving on night of murder without glasses. Checking glasses with lens under Mrs. Simpson's body was discovered they were the same. It was all the evidence we needed to secure a conviction. His cloudy vision, however, did not enable him to foresee consequences of foul deed. Thank you.